Hey guys, it's Shane with DNS Adventures, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you an install or an upgrade that you may want to do on your F-350 as well. So one thing we had in our F-250, our 2015 F-250 that we do not have in our F-350 is a backup camera. Right before we sold the F-250 and got the F-350, the handle, the aftermarket handle that had that in case the backup camera actually broke on us. And we had the Tanu going over the back of the truck. And let's just say it was interesting to try to get that um, tailgate down so we could actually replace the handle on that truck. So after weighing my options, I'm trying to save some money here. So there's definitely a lot of different options you have when it comes to backup cameras on vehicles. On the truck, like I said, you can have the tailgate camera on the back. You can actually have a camera in your Ford emblem, or you can put a license plate camera on the back. For LCD monitors, you can put one on your rear view mirror. You can have an LCD screen placed in your center console here for your dash, or you can just have an aftermarket, um, one that kind of just sits freely throughout wherever you want to sit it, kind of like we do for our um, trailer backup camera. So this may or may not be a project that you're willing to take on yourself. Um, after doing my own research, I think I'm going to be able to at least do the stereo install myself. The backup camera, I might be able to do, I might not be able to do. I mean, either way I can probably do it, but I want it done right the first time without screwing up. So I think there's a lot less risk installing a stereo than there is with the backup camera. So. I'll have to do a little bit more research on the backup camera, but first I'll show you how to get this thing installed. So unlike most of my videos, I'll say it right now, I'm not an expert in doing this. I've never installed a stereo on a car before, so this is my first go at it. I'm not an electrician either, so don't go by any methods that I do here. Don't take anything I say here as a fact. Do your own research before you do your own saw. This is just how I'm installing it on my truck. So after doing research, we decided to go with this Pioneer, um, where's the model number? The DMH 1500NEX. The reason I went with this model, because I went through this website called Crutchfield, and based off the wiring and everything, it can basically do everything that this stereo can do, minus the um, satellite. But I think this still can do this, well, it says Sirius right there. It can still do the Sirius satellite, but it's not going to be... Um, through your system that's already in here, you need your own antenna to be able to do so. But based off all the wiring and everything I got, I should still be able to use the steering wheel controls. I will be able to tell you if that's true or false after this install, but I believe based on the kit I bought, I should be able to do that. The very first step, however, isn't to start tackling and taking this panel off for your stereo install. It's actually to work on a little bit of wiring. It's not super difficult, but I'll show you what I have to do here. As I said previously about the stereo from crutchfield.com, on that website they actually sell kits to install it to your specific vehicle. So if you're a beginner like me, that might be a good place to start. We got this stereo because it was kind of a middle of the road stereo, it wasn't the best out there and it wasn't the cheapest either. So something that'll get the job done and hopefully last a while too. With the kit from Crutchfield, you do get quite a few things. Um, obviously you get the stereo, um, the mounting hardware, this Datalink Maestro F01 or F01 kit, and this is for the Ford harness specifically, so you can hook it to your Ford. And it also comes with this interface that you can use to control your steering wheel buttons, and basically you can kind of program this the way you want to be able to have the system act the way it used to, like if you have Ford with the sync system, this will help you utilize those previous systems that you already had. It also comes with obviously instructions. This is the wiring harness that goes directly into the stereo itself. But as you can see, there's a bunch of wires just kind of hanging here that are not connected to anything. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you here in a second. So within this yellow box here is the um, Ford harness. So you can hook it to all your Ford OEM stereo system product. And you'll also notice on this harness, there's a bunch of wires that also aren't connected to anything. So part of the job for if you're doing this install yourself is you're going to have to match these cables to this cable harness. 
Originally, I just went the Ace Hardware and bought some closed end um, electrical connectors here. But after doing a little bit more research, I ended up buying a different product from Crutchfield to make this install a little bit easier. I decided to get these specific, specifically made stereo radio um, wire harness connector kit here. And these are very simple. You literally just put the stereo cables right next to each other, twist them, you insert the bottom part of this connector, then you tighten the top part on there. Then you have a nice, secure, and organized connection. That made sense to me, so I did spend, I think it was $6 for this connector kit. But obviously, there's a bunch of different ways you can use to connect wires together. So within that yellow box, or the box for the Datalink, the Maestro um, Datalink product, it has a PDF, or a link to a PDF you can go to. It shows all the different wiring for all the different types of cars out there. So in our case, since we have a F-350 Ford, I'm going to the Ford F-Series Super Duty 2011 to 2016 here. As you can see here in the install guide, it says it retains steering wheel controls, sync voice commands, sync Bluetooth, and more. But if we go down to the next page here, it does have step-by-step -step instructions on what you need to do in order to install this data link. So this is the data link maestro right here. It's just a device that you can um, hook your Ford connectors to this. And you also connect um, the maestro to your stereo itself. As I said, this will help you use your steering wheel controls, your sync. If you don't need this, you don't have to use this to install the stereo. This is just trying to keep all the functionality that you already had on your stereo in place. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look at that data wiring manual that I just showed you and start connecting these wires to these wires here. Also included on this PDF file is the wiring diagram itself. This will show the forward harness over here compared to the stereo harness that you're using to install it to. It shows the different colors. Some of them match up perfectly and some of them you have to look at a radio wire reference card that they also include for your specific model. And here's that radio wire reference card here. Like you can see here, um, depending on which brand you go with, there's the Alpine, Kenwood, Pioneer, Sony, they have different colored cables. So for like the illumination wire, for example, the Maestro harness is orange, and I'm installing it on a Pioneer, so it's actually gonna be matching with the orange and white cable. But for step one here, you can see you actually have to cut off the um, connector here on all these cables so you can expose the wire. Make sure you pay attention to the wire diagram because I'm sure this isn't the case for every single vehicle out there. This is specific for the Ford F-350 Super Duty. So as mentioned, I cut off all of the heads of those wires here. It is scary to do, but it must be done. So do be careful as you're stripping these wires because the insulation on one of these cables is actually slightly bigger than the other. So you want to make sure you aren't cutting your wire away as you're stripping it. Make sure these are cut about the same length then we'll put we'll twist these together and follow the instructions that i showed you earlier on the back of the stereo radio wire harness connector kit so the first step here i twisted all these wires together and now we're going to put the cap on top yeah i couldn't do this one hand but you just slide the cap over then you twist this on top there's really not much more to it so i've done about half here you can kind of get the idea you just kind of screw these things on not super complicated all right guys, so it might not be professionally done here, but I've gotten all the wires connected that I said to connect. There is a yellow and black mute wire on the harness that goes into the stereo that was not mapped to this configuration. Even though there is a yellow and black wire on the forward side of the harness, the forward side is for the foot brake and the Pioneer stereo side is for the mute button or mute function so those are not to be lined up so all the rest of the wires are just going to be sitting here hanging because they are not relevant to this pioneer stereo in order to get this maestro configured to your vehicle you're going to have to plug in the micro usb port to the maestro and then usb into your laptop and you're going to actually have to flash this thing you can get that flash software you can either do it via internet explorer on your computer or you can actually download some desktop software, which is what I ended up doing in order to flash this device to what I needed for my F-350. 
All right guys, so it's a new day. We've gotten rain for like the past two or three days. So I haven't been able to finish its install because I wanted to get you some decent lighting so you can see what I'm doing here. But today we're gonna be taking this stereo out. And the first thing I need to do in order to take that stereo out is remove these two panels. There'll be some um, bolts underneath there that I'll need to take out. And then this whole panel actually pops off. That way we can get access to unhook this stereo. So I do have this trim panel tool to help me out here. It's not really designed for this purpose. I actually bought this when I got the brake controller installed on my Nissan Frontier. So not really made for this purpose. And plus I'd probably rather use plastic on this, but I think it'll do the job. Just gotta be careful not to scratch everything. Up. So that was actually easier to do with the flathead screwdriver because there's a little clip under here that you can fit a flathead screwdriver underneath. This popped right out. Gotta do the same thing on the sink side now. All right, so we got the sink disconnected it as well and the next step is to actually just take out these I can't remember what size they are I'll put that down here if I remember to um, but got to take these bolts out so we can then pop this panel off I think I'm actually going to disconnect this too because if you try to take this panel off it's obviously going to catch on these so I'm going to go ahead and disconnect these wires all right so this is easier said than done I see some people just kind of pop this right off I did struggle a little bit getting this thing off of here Started on the bottom and kind of worked my way up, but got it separated. I still haven't taken these wires off because I don't think I'm really going to have to for what I need to do here. Should be able to take the stereo straight out and then put the other one in and plug things in, in theory. Ended up just disconnecting a couple of wires so this thing can lay down out of the way. But at least they're consistent. These are the exact same 9 30 second size. So I'm going to pop this stereo out of here. So in case you're curious, this is what the old stereo looks like. Here's the factory wires in the back here. So I'm gonna unplug all these guys and see if I can get this new data link system to plug in correctly. All right, so old stereo versus new stereo. New stereo is much smaller. That's why I have a little kit to kind of fill in the gaps around the outside of this. The kit for the Super Duty is the Metra Installer's Choice. It's the Ford Lincoln Mercury Multi-Kit 2004 and up. 95-5812 is what I'm going to use so hopefully this works we'll see <laughs> so this is plastic construction just FYI replacing the metal that's already on here so yeah I actually read the instructions like a good boy and you're supposed to use these flathead screwdrivers I mean it makes sense but there's two sets of screws these are a little bit rounded and these are the flat ones and either these are the ones that you put into the side the Pull this panel on. Not a huge fan of replacing metal with plastic, but it is what it is. Hopefully that'll hold in just fine. Let me tell you, filming this takes much longer. <laughs> I don't think the stereo install is all that complicated. All right, so step one is what we already did by connecting all those wires. Step two is to connect the factory harness to the F01T harness, which is the aftermarket harness that we have that we just wired connect only the available connectors. For example, if the factory harness has two connectors, connect only these two connectors. So we got our bundle mess here of all the wires. And so we're gonna be connecting the factories to these um, factory connectors here. Don't worry, I'll clean this up later. <laughs> I got everything plugged in there. There even has a um, adapter for your antenna to plug in here so you can plug into the stereo as well. So I went ahead and put that on there. I think this is for the um, satellite connection that we're not going to be using. The next step is to connect the ODB2 connector into the ODB2 of the vehicle, which is this guy here. It has a longer wire because it goes all the way down there. The hardest part of that was trying to get the OBD connector on there because you have to feed it back through there. I dropped it and got it stuck back there. So my wife with her smaller hands was able to reach back there and correct that for me. So then we fit it through with something sturdy like a like a coat hanger or something like that. So you can feed it through there and grab it on the other side and then you plug it down there below. Next up, according to these instructions is to plug the aftermarket radio harness into the aftermarket radio. Plug the data cable to the data port of the aftermarket radio. Insert the audio cable, blah, 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 blah. So basically we're hooking everything up to the aftermarket radio now. This is also where that wiring diagram comes in handy. You can see exactly where everything's supposed to plug into. As far as where to plug in your um, RCA cables into the back of your aftermarket stereo, that's where you'll want to look at your aftermarket stereo specific plugins. But you can see here at least how to connect everything to the data link and how to connect the data link to the um, aftermarket. 
All right guys, so I think I got it installed properly here. The subwoofer was a bit interesting because instead of plugging into where the sub says on the Pioneer itself, I had to plug it into the mid-range um, area. So not sure if I hooked that up properly or not, but Android Auto works. The Android Auto does not work on the sync connector. You actually have to plug into the USB on here. I'm gonna try to think about a way to get the USB exposed here so it's easier to plug in when we're going down the road. But besides that, we're pretty much installed. Um, it's literally just a kind of a plug and play to follow the diagrams. I'm gonna have to organize the heck out of this back here, but just make sure everything's organized before you put it back in and that's pretty much a wrap. I think I might do a different video or I might slap it in here, who knows, on everything about this Pioneer radio itself and why we got it. I have not installed the backup camera yet. That'll be probably another video in itself, or I might just have a professional do it so I don't ruin the wiring on the factory wire. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in here, um, get it all set up. The steering wheel controls um, do work as well. Here we go. You can see the volume going up and down. Um, I don't know if the phone works. So this is a cheaper version. It's not the wireless version. That would have been like a hundred more dollars. This is about $300 for the Pioneer radio with the touchscreen. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap this back in here and show you guys a little bit more. Well guys, we got it installed. I'm not gonna do a demo of the Pioneer product itself because that's not really the point of this video. But the one thing I do have to figure out is how to get this USB port from this into the car right now. I just have it running through this accessory port where you guys might have some switches, but I don't have any switches. So I might just dremel off a little piece of this so the wire can get through without damaging the wire. And we should be able to plug our devices into it. You can still use Bluetooth, but that's so you can use Android Auto or Apple Auto or whatever it's called. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more videos like it. You can also check us out at dnsadventures.com. And as always, adventure on. And if you don't bring the proper footwear, you can't really do this, but it feels good on the feet. <laughs>